Hi, the concept I'm going to talk about is called Hadley circulation. So first, I will explain the mechanism of this circulation, then its influences on the Earth. In the end, I will briefly talk about its expansion. Okay, let me give you a general impression of Hadley circulation at first. Hadley circulation, also called Hadley cell, named after George Hadley, is a large-scale tropical atmospheric circulation between the equator and 30 degrees latitude, driven by the differential heating of the Earth's surface. The warm, moist air rises at or near the equator, flowing poorward at 10 to 15 kilometers above the surface, descending in the subtropics, which is usually around 30 degrees latitude, and then returning in greater world near the surface. Now let's explain the mechanism in detail. As the sun's rays are focused most on or near equator, it receives the highest intensity of sunlight. So the air at the equator are generally the warmest. Since Earth is spherical, Light is more spread out if you go north or south from the equator. Therefore, the closer to the poles, the colder the weather will be. And because water is really abandoned near the equator, so the air on the surface of the equator is warm and moist. Warm air will rise, and as the air rises, the relative humidity increases. So the vapor is condensed to form clouds and then it rains. The air will rise to the tropopos about 10 to 15 kilometers above sea level, where the air is no longer buoyant, buoyant so, which means it can't go up anymore. Pressure here is higher than the north and south because of rising air, so the air will diverge, forced forward by the continual rise of air below. However, the air won't go to the poles because of Coriolis force, which is an inertial force that acts on objects that are in motion relative to a rotating reference frame. In the northern hemisphere, air that travels from equator to the poles to, to the pole uh, to the poles near tropopoles will change its direction mainly because of two forces. One is pressure gradient force which points to the north. The other one is Coriolis force which is perpendicular to the direction of velocity points to the right. The air in the southern hemisphere follows the same principle. So, when the air gets to 30 degrees latitude, the direction of its velocity is almost parallel to the lines of longitude. The air can't go to the poles anymore, so it accumulates and then goes down. Since most of the water vapor is lost to condensation and precipitation in the upward branch of the Hadley circulation, and its temperature also decreases during rising, during rising and poleward transport, so the descending air at 30 degree la degrees latitude is cool and dry. As it sinks, it warms adiabatically, decreasing its relative humidity. Air near the surface will then flow toward the low-pressure equator, replacing the rising air. Because of Coriolis force, it also goes in a curve, so eventually the Hadley circulation is complete. Let's uh, now, let's talk about the influence of Hadley circulation. Because of the warm and moist rising air near the equator, the tropic area will receive high precipitation. And since the air descends at 30 degrees latitude, it's dry and cool. The climate there is really arid. Many of the world's deserts are located in those subtropical latitudes. And in the end, what I want to say is that the Hadley circulation is not unchangeable. It has expanded since last century related to climate change. The expansion has influenced the climate in semi-arid regions, affecting the ecosystems, agriculture, and water availability there. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your listening.